today's session specifically i think we have not online The area society is extremely proud to present yet another workshop in its workshop series. Today's workshop is mediators as peacemakers of the world. Featuring Mrs. Gayatri Puri as our keynote speaker. Conflict is inevitable, but fighting is optional. Mediation as a process allows parties to resolve conflicts with greater communication and focus on long term goals. <coughs> Today's session specifically focuses on how mediation helps resolve conflicts in matrimonial causes where emotions run high and party welfare is of paramount importance. Mediators in this situation require specific strategies and skills to assist parties in the best possible manner. Our speaker today, Mrs. Gayatri Puri, is a leading advocate and experienced mediator with experience and expertise in diversified fields of law. Mrs. Puri has been extensively involved in matters before the Supreme Court of India, various high courts, district courts, and tribunals. She has also been an accredited mediator of the Delhi High Court Mediation and Conciliation Center, Samadhan, and has completed the Advanced Mediation Training Program from Pepperdine University, California. She has mediated a number of cases and settled various disputes, pre-litigation, mediation, and conciliation cases, and brings highly skilled problem-solving compassion and zeal to the successful resolution of each client's dispute. She also actively participates in programs for building awareness for social justice and volunteers with organizations such as DZWA, Inner Wheel, and Amritam Childhood Trust. She has also recently been conferred the Dream Builder Award for her advocacy and social justice work by Inner Wheel International 2022. We are honored to have you here for this lecture, ma'am. I would now like to invite Mrs. Puri to begin today's workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me today, and I'm really impressed with the faculty that you have here. Uh, I have the opportunity of meeting your faculty when we were yet to reach here. If, if you sit down and move the mic, then maybe if you like to stand. No, I would like to stand. Um, I'm going to please. Uh, please stand. The way you'd like. Any way you'd like. You want to sit and speak. Pop his podium for us. I do that. As you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it, I have to mediate this also. <laughs> 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 okay. 
We'll resolve this dispute. Also. <laughs> okay. Great. See how easy it was to resolve this problem. <laughs> So it's our attitude, actually, more than anything else. And good evening to all of us. I say to myself and to my esteemed listeners today and the faculty who already know it all. So my words will begin with the fact that what Justice Hema Kohli, Honorable Justice Hema Kohli stated in one of her speeches, that mediators are peacemakers. The goal of mediation is to help Parties generate a mutually acceptable set the settlement of the immediate dispute. All mediators' actions also are designed to facilitate that out outcome. But we have to deal with emotions. Emotions are the most important aspect that has to be dealt with when we are dealing with mediation. Emotions that might escalate anger especially in matrimonial, you no, know, I am not going to settle this. I have to show that person what we can do. Now the anger can prevent the settlement and can control the spouse, control the fact, oh, she doesn't let me meet the child. I have to take visitation. So, you know, I'm going to be tough. I am not going to break it through. Issues are non-negotiable, are not diverted, while parties are encouraged to focus on negotiable interests. Mediators, mediators tend to discourage a discussion because we know when the spouses end up discussing, they will tend to discuss past. And as mediators, we don't want to discuss past because past means blame. Blame which will not let the progress take place. Rather, parties are encouraged to focus on what they want in the future and develop ways. If in the matrimonial matter that we are discussing today, the whole focus is matrimonial today. We're discussing today regarding that, oh, how should we settle this issue? How should we settle the fact that, okay, there can be two form of settlements. Either you are able to reside together, amicably solve that issue, if we are able to help you solve that issue, or we want to part ways amicably now how do we bring out a settlement in that manner what should the agreement involve is it involvement of children in this aspect is it a, is it a prop, joint property at hand is it the jewelry is it the ancestral nucleus what is it that we're trying to uh, basically dwell upon the settlement here the settlement oriented mediators frequently try to keep parties at track that is where the caucus comes into being I'm sure all of us are aware about caucus. The very fact of the matter that we are trying to keep the parties at bay. When we try talking about the past, when we know we are going astray, it is a trained mediator to facilitate, to bridge, to be able to give that platform to both the parties to speak. But maybe it hurts the other person to hear the blame. The very fact of the matter is not able to resolve. So what we do in return is we say, okay, when we are introducing ourselves, when we have the opening statement, we talk about the fact that there will be a time that you will be told to book caucus. And it was not that I'm only preferring that person in the individual, the girl or the boy, I'm not biased to each. And now after that, I'll have a joint session. So that encourages both the parties to actually pour themselves out in front of the mediator. So when he's pouring them himself out in the mediation to the mediator, he's actually dealing with his confidentiality also. The very fact he's saying, okay, you know, I want to say this, but don't tell her. He will leave it to you. And we as mediators are trained to keep that information with us because that information is what will develop the trust in the party to come forward for mediation. See, be it being a volunteer process, mediation can be failed anytime by any of the parties. If they feel this trip is not going their way or it is being biased or somewhere or the other mediator is not understanding, there has been constant blame game, acquisition, things taking place there. So the trust factor has to be first developed by the mediator. And once the trust is built up, 
you can facilitate. We cannot direct them how to go about doing it. We can guide them. No, we can totally bridge the fact and facilitate the fact that we can control the mediation by keeping harmony and peace, by being totally uh, there with the parties and raising those questions that makes the parties think on this fact. How should we resolve this problem? What do you want to do? Is it a, uh, is it a possibility of you joining back? No, okay. You want to part separately. What do you have to think about that? So that question goes to both the parties. It doesn't restrict to one because it's a life of both the parties that are at stake who have invested their emotions, their time, their energy. And if there's a child from the, chi from the wedlock, the future of the child, how the child will have visitation, how, where will the child stay? And many a times when the child is old enough and has reasons to stay, and even there are times when they want to come forward and meet the mediator because they have something to share themselves. So we, as mediators, encourage that aspect and bring them on board and share their, their difficulties also, what they have to say to that. Because see, we all have different opinions. The fact is we have to resolve. Now, how do we resolve amicably is by bringing in the concept of confidentiality, the very fact that they are open enough to bring forth their part of the beings. So when we are, when we are introducing mediation, we are totally trying to keep the process going and using participants to move as quickly and efficiently as possible from one step to the next. Deadlines are one type of action or forcing strategy that can be used to persuade parties to reach an agreement. Mahatma Gandhi said, the true function of a lawyer is to unite parties. Now, in this situation, it's an option to both the parties. If it is an abuse in marriage, if somewhere she doesn't want to stay or he doesn't want to stay, and there are reasons behind that, we are no one to direct them. We can give them a solution, an amicable settlement in return of their own settlement. It is a win-win situation for, uh, for the parties because they are formulating their agreement. The lawyers are there to see the legality of the agreement and the very fact of the matter, when they come around, come around and say, if we cannot live together, this is how I want my life to be and I don't want any interference of X, Y, Z. And that's the time that parties with the help of uh, the lawyers and the mediator can make a settlement which is effective to both the parties and they will not be violation of the terms. In many a time we're making, we're making agreements there, we are writing the word contempt. If you don't, if you violate these terms, you will be in contempt. I cannot force anyone to come for first motion. Now suppose I, the parties have decided to part ways. Now how do you make sure that they come across and there are exchange of goods in form of istridan? dowry and there is uh, money component how do we divide it what is the ratio what is comfortable to the spouse who has to give and the spouse who has to receive now the very fact of the matter we, along with that there is a notion in under hma which is hindu marriage act where there is first motion and second motion divorce and there is a period defined in that but how do we reach for the first motion signing and making a statement which is required when we go to a divorce court, a family court, where we go for a divorce. So there are terms so that there's no violation. I don't want to go to court and contempt say, you know, the agreement was made, which we have to follow. And I'm not being able to because she never came forward or he never came forward for second motion. So we as mediators who are also lawyers, there is law to define in this. There are judgments for that effect. Epic court has been very clear in her judgments. And uh, even to the fact that uh, uh, even the period which is defined between the first motion and second motion, the six months to 18 months period has been condoned by the Epic court. That if you're staying separately, there are certain terms which have to be followed. And that is also waived off. It's waived off in uh, the family court. So, but for that, I have to be aware. As a mediator and law, the lawyers have to be aware about it. When we read the settlement agreement, how do we go about doing it? So the first foremost, as I'm aware, that the ADR 
uh, society here and is very active and is giving, giving awards because total credit goes to the faculty and the students are taking interest in the field. It's the fact, how do I introduce myself? I'm sure all of you know about the opening statement being the most important statement. I have to be welcoming. I hope I'm able to welcome you, my children here who are hearing me and taking information. I welcome you all to this little class that we have. So I want to build that confidence. The very fact you are not here to, you know, to cry, but you are here to heal. I am there to help you. So my welcome to the parties and to the lawyers have to be profoundly delightful. I say I welcome you. I'm, I'm so happy that you've come forward for this mediation because whereas in commercial courts, it is the court who directs you for mediation and they are settled. But in matrimonial, as I say, I'm, during, I'm dealing with already knowing the fact I'm going to deal with the emotional impasse. An impasse which will cause hurdles. But for that, I have to create a very smooth environment, a beautiful environment that they are welcoming, uh, feeling for them. So I welcome you all, my fellow party and the lawyers who've brought them here. Because in my mind, I know the lawyers are going to help me with the settlement, right? Then I will share basic knowledge and basic information about myself. May I enact that? Because I'm sure there is going to be some sort of an interesting uh, proposition coming your way and you're all excited about that. Good morning. I'm the mediator. I'm Gaitri Bulli. And it's a pleasure for me to be here for uh, be a mediator to both the parties who come here. I see uh, the little statement that I've got because I'm not authorized to get any documents that it seems a matrimonial dispute. Okay, I'm very happy you have decided to use the path of mediation. Let's resume it's a pre litigation mediation which we all have the opening for. Uh, I would, it's an application which is jointly put by both the parties that you really want to resolve this problem, which has been inevitably there in your life. So I, I'm just a facilitator. I am just here to be able to help you bridge and to reach your point of amicable settlement. I hope you're comfortable with English. Is there any other language you want me to use? Because I only know Hindi or English, but thodi thodi sun Punjabi are. So I have, what I have done is, I have already read. I have informed them that I'm available with these three languages. And you may communicate with me in that. And you don't have to worry. It's a voluntary process. It's a process that was initiated by both of you. And any of, any of you can fail the process. And this mediation will end. But the very fact of the matter that you will save time, energy, and your money in litigation. When we know that you have identified the problem and you've come here, I'm sure we we'll come with a solution too. So thereafter, I will explain my role. I'm a neutral party. I'm a party, I don't know either of you. I don't know you. I don't know you. So I am here as a neutral party to hear both of you. I bring you to a table, a situation where you will resolve yourself. And the very fact in that when you resolve, you will yourself be happy. There will be no, no further challenges faced by you. I'm no judge. I cannot do, uh, pass a judgment. And no one will be going up in. So you can always tell me when you want me to stop. Or when you want to take a break. I'm always there. So each step I'm confirming. In my each statement I'm confirming that I am there for you. And also the fact that whatever is said here is as for law. Section 89 of Code of Procedure is there for that. And the very fact that the courts are encouraging it. Each court today encourages to go for mediation, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's guardianship petition, whether it is your divorce petition, 
court say, why don't you go and go in for counseling? Why don't you go for mediation? And the courts are encouraging it because they all know disputes can be settled in mediation. Now, what are the advantages? I have to tell them. We all like to know advantages. We all like to know Mujhi kya milega is. So I have to spell it out. First of all, it's confidential. Whatever you tell me, I am not going to tell anyone about it, especially the spouse. Till you inform me that I may, I should tell them. Because the concept, which will later on come, as you all are budding law graduates, is about partner and partner. I'm sure you know about these terms. These terms will come later on. So I have to be informing them that I am not going to be revealing any confidential information regarding that. And the very lastly aspect of the strengths and weaknesses of the parties. I am no one to tell you that this is your weakness and this is your strength. I am only going to make you think. Are you thinking the right thing? Have you thought it in this manner? That's it. Because I am just a neutral party facilitating the program for all of you. And I'm going to help to improve relationships. How do I do that? Even if we are thinking for a divorce and the child involved. So don't you think your, the parents will meet on parent-teacher meeting, on sports day, on the very fact of graduation, on later. So I have to improve the relationship to such an extent that at least they can say, hi, how are you? Oh, you moved on. <laughs> so all those things I'm able to say because I have improved the relationship. And remember, there are visitations. The child is going to go for night spends. The child is going to go to traveling. Oh, he decided to take him out at last. So to avoid all these conversations and to avoid all these, you know, nudging, I would prefer that they have an improved relationship with each other. Because I, as a lawyer, as a mediator, always want to think about a child. You know, divorce is only between two individuals, not between parents. Because I really believe the father will remain the father, the mother will remain the mother. The next spouse will always be a stepfather and a stepmother. It is my maturity as a spouse and maturity dwell in the rest of the parties that is better we have a good relationship. We are not acquainted. We have spent a life together. We have given birth to a child and the child is not told that he's unwanted. So I really feel the best way out is to explain to the parties that you are divorcing, the child is not. So when this concept is clear, and believe me, I've done many patrimonial mediations and I'm very happy to address to the audience here and to inform them, yes, many of them are happy divorced parents and they are looking after the child and child. Tomorrow will be a better, better spouse and a better being in the society. He has not done anything. Why should he be penalized? Why should she be penalized for that? So keeping that emotion in mind, I dwell upon the relationship. I help them to create options, creative options. And I try to tell them that it's a party controlled outcome. If the, if the spouse says, I don't want anything, I know and I want out of this marriage, I can manage everything. I, as a mediator, have no one to say, nee, yaar, kuch to <laughs> I'm not going to say that because I am totally clear on this fact about my role. I'm not playing the role. I'm, I am there with my training, very clear on this aspect. I am here for facilitation. You are the deciding factor along with your spouse regarding this and we are putting forth on this aspect through a settlement. And of course, there has to be discipline. There are times when we look to be our engage. You've taken my car and you've taken my jewelry. I will not let you go. I will fire you. I will be FIR, I will be litigation. I have to stop. 
is a decorum which has to be maintained. We are not in the fish market. We are here to mediate. So basically, you are in control of your mediation. There has to be decorum maintained. And we need to make the ground rules. Now, what are the ground rules? Is to first seek consent of the parties that they are voluntarily coming and participating in this mediation. There is always a form attached to the same. And there will be no interruptions. And there will be flexibility of applying the process. Along with that, there will be again a caucus, a separate session, and there will be a joint session. Both the parties can address to the issues separately and jointly. And the most important aspect is what we have to see is about the gatekeeper. Do we all know about the term gatekeeper? Gatekeeper is the keeper of the gates. Well, I will expand it in a different manner. He's actually controlling the party. So when I identify the gatekeeper, I can generally just ask him to help me with the situation of the party. Now, do I have to reveal the fact that I have come? No. Do I have to judge the parties? No way. I'm not permitted to do so. My training doesn't allow me to do so. That is why I am a mediator. Because I know today I have to help the spouses before me, the parties before me to mediate. All right. So the most important aspect is the fact that was mediation there in society prior to this ADR or the concept which is coming? Ye to nahi ki yoga shuru se hamare paas thi aur humne tab dekhi jab Western world ne adopt kar liya. Aisa bilkul bhi nahi. Let me tell you. It starts from the time of Mahabharat. Do we remember Mahabharat? Do we remember reading Amrishitra Kathai and everybody telling us? It was a time when Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna went to Kauravs and told them to settle it with Pandavas. And what happened then? What happened when he went there? The mediation failed. The mediation failed and that is why we had the war of Mahabharata. And can you believe the Honorable Chief Justice Envy Ramana stated the same example currently when he was addressing a conference for mediation and information technology in Gujarat. And he stated so. He used the example of Mahabharata to explain the importance and need of mediation. Mahabharata was an outcome of failed mediation. He quoted, Imagine how much destruction would have been avoided, how life would have been saved, and how kingdoms would have prospered had Krishna succeeded. So the importance of ADR, importance of mediation, started back then when we were not even there. Or maybe I was someone else. But today I'm very happy of uh, being here before you and encouraging you to be the new leaders in mediation and go for the further trainings, go for that and look after it. And the very fact that it went down, it did not end in Mahabharata. Have you heard of the word pan panchayats? They were there. Who were there? They were the respected elders of the village. And you know how they used to say panchayat? Because there were five people sitting. I believe there are today three people as mediator and co mediators in today's proposition. There were five respected elders of the village where the parties used to be brought before them and they used to ask and mediate and try to solve the issues. Maybe the land, agriculture, maybe commercial. Usne uske paise le li, uske recovery thi. Tab to 138 ke matters nahi hai. I'm sure it was just cash daily. And otherwise, and matrimonial issues which was taking place. Now the area mechanism in the modern world introduced it introduced local data. That is also a form of area that we are doing before you. Now, I want to explain the word Bhatna. Are we aware of the word Bhatna? So when Bhatna and Bhatna, and I don't know how to pronounce it, M-L-A-T-N-A. If someone pronounces it from the I say Malatna. Okay, Akansha ma'am has checked me on Malatna. So the very fact of the matter, that is what is important because that is important for our bargaining tactics. Are we aware about the bargaining tactics? 
the soft bargaining and the hard bargaining. We have to identify when the negotiation leads. How do we get the best negotiation out of it? So when I'm sitting before in the matrimonial issue, and there is a party that's saying, no, my is not a main plan. Like you get the other thing, you know, a CR is not the thing. I want more because my life is spoiled. I think I'm not even earning as much. How do I give it? Many do that. There is already, already a term of partner and partner. They all know me. It's a good thing. Simple aspect. So we see it on the table, which is taking place. And of course, the education and maintenance of the families is important. And that is why this money component comes into being. Now, the very important aspect, we all have been facing COVID issue. Isn't that right? During COVID, what happened to us? We were just locked in. And believe me, if I may say, during COVID, it was the most, we saw the most rights of matrimonial disputes. Well, I'm discussing the same with the, in the conference room with the faculty. And that's when the concept of ODR, online dispute resolution, was introduced, where parties were able to meet, mediate virtually, with the mediation process taking virtual stand, when the parties were sent in a caucus, in a separate rooms, totally through a lobby, they were locked out, and they were still doing mediation. Now, the important aspect in the ODR was the fact that during the mediation, even litigation, we were fighting through virtual reports. And believe me, it was very effective. Very effective, very cost-effective. People would reach out. At least who had the access to those mobile phones, to those laptops so they could reach out. But it did affect the destitute people. We didn't know how to reach out on those aspects. And there, that was some dilemma they were all facing. But that's when I would say technology, integration of technology take, took place, where this ODR was introduced. Now we are well versed with this concept, and we want the ODR to be often be, we know it's been introduced as EADR. Its potential benefit extend far beyond this genesis of parent system, namely ADR. ODR can help in not just dispute resolution, but also dispute containment dispute avoidance and promotion of general legal health of the country. So we are generally talking about this fact that nothing could stop mediation. We were totally at it, totally going ahead with this, and we wanted to settle out the dispute between the parties. Now, the most important aspect is, as a mediator, what do I have to see? What should be my checklist? Even when I'm doing an ODR, what should be my checklist? When I'm looking at the parties, I have to talk about rightness. I'm not talking about the food driving. I'm talking about rightness. How does that affect this? Is, are parties willing to proceed in mediation? I'm not judging. I am just gathering information. Preparation. Do parties need inception, testing, discovery to be prepared for meaningful negotiation? Participation. What kind of participation are they retaining? Who is the key stakeholder? Who is the gatekeeper, as I just said? Experts. Involve experts in mediation. Suppose there is a matrimonial counseling taking place and there is an expert or there is some psychological issue or mental issue taking place. In this. If I need to reach out to an expert, expert is most welcome to join the negotiation, the mediation, to be to help anyone to help the mediation to be successful, even family members, even friends, even experts can come forward. Now, on this aspect of settlement negotiations, how do the parties wish to handle the settlement discussion? This mediation, the design, the process, how do I design the process and the parties come forward for settlement. That is my duty as a mediator. That is what I'm supposed to do, is to encourage them on this aspect. And the very fact, if during this time, during this settlement talk, during this emotional outbreak, there is an impasse. What is an impasse? I'm not able to break through. I'm not able to make 
Sharuk see what Sheila is saying. I'm not. Sheila is adamant. Sharuk is adamant in his side. You know, I am not going to budge. I am not going to do this. What do I do? How do I overcome my impasse? How do I do go about solving this impasse? For that, I need to change my procedure. What are the techniques that I have to do to that situation that I have in? I have to reframe. I have to reframe my position, my options, offers. Try to tell in a caucus. कि इसको क्या सोच रहे हैं आप वो नहीं करेगी अब कैसे करें आप क्या सोचते हैं हाउ टू पुट मल्टीपल एग्स इन अ बास्केट इज व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू फोकस ऑन इंटरेस्ट आप क्यों नहीं सोचते हैं इसके बारे में आप इस पे ही लगे रहेंगे कितना वक्त निकल गया है व्हाई आर यू नॉट थिंकिंग जस्ट डोंट लेट दिस ईगो गेट इनटू बीइंग टू गेट गेट यू आउट ऑफ द फोकस यूज रियलिटी टेस्टिंग देन स्टार्ट ऑल ओवर अगेन in that caucus in that separate session in that promotion where i have to go then post one discussion put in some humor ye to galib ki maybe kaha tha kuch sher e shayari ho gaya kuch mood badalne ke liye koi sa joke crack kar diya jaye so that they are able to break they able to break through this aspect experiment with several options before reaching a meeting shake up Shake up the perspective by approaching the issue from an entirely different direction, and of course, I hope you have heard about go to the balcony. Have you heard about that? Sometimes the mediator needs to leave the room and to leave the parties alone. What happens in that aspect when I leave the room? I leave the parties alone. We are humans. We do tend to talk. The communication starts. and sometimes the silence speaks volumes and the parties tend to realize is it worth it i cannot say it i cannot do anything i can just step out and give myself that option and that option to the parties to go so very nicely it was said go to the balcony chapter is from the book called getting past no deals with awareness these with how to overcome negative reactive situations and our skills our ability to see ourselves others and our interaction and our ability to see how to change the way we are interacting in order to achieve a more productive outcome it is very important and when i do so i ask them parties to talk and to listen then i identify the interest and of course i use the term partner in that that i will put the other party in caucus later on and say have you got the best interest out of have you really thought about it and when i go i go to the balcony there are four habits persisting effective mediator sticks to a task until it is completed I am not going to fail the mediation till the parties are coming, and they want to continue coming. I am going to be persistent to complete it. They analyze the problem and develop a strategy to solve it. If that approach does not work, they try another one. Give up, nahi karna. Just continue. Use new strategies. Each human mind has a different way of doing that. Managing. impulsiveness they are calm and thoughtfulness they think before they act so they have a vision outcome a goal my goal is to resolve and to come to a settlement they consider alternatives and con consequences before taking action think flexibly how do we go about using it use your mind to motivate the parties to come up with multiple solutions they take and they can take a bird view okay <laughs> i've been told to be only for 10 minutes and i was going to go on <laughs> and they have intuitions and hunches and i know when the parties are before me that i have to conclude 
and I have to get them on the right forum and the right perspective. But the most important thing thereafter, what is taking place, we know about the rest of the being and how we have evolved and how we have done it. and what is happening in society at large, how to use the techniques that are going to the balcony. I'm, I'm not a smoker, but I can always take an option. As a man, you can always say, as a woman, you can say, I'm just going for a fan, you know. And that's the way we are going out and going to the balcony and giving option to the both the parties to settle the issues among themselves. But the most important thing, which now I have want to include in this aspect is the inner yes method as a mediator. I have to put myself, understand myself, and develop my own inner body, my own feeling, and reframe myself. I cannot associate myself with either of the parties. I have to rise above and see the problem. The most important thing is to stay active in your zone, accept and train yourself. And of course, many a times when we are going for these tough mediations, when we know we are tackling with tough clients, um, not my clients, the parties, and this tough negotiation with the lawyers who are sitting before me, it's very good to have inner peace, to do a bit of mediation before mediation and meditation. What happens is only the I and the A are changing, but it makes a lot of difference. I have to be in inner peace to be able to tackle with them. I have to give and receive. There's so much information coming to my mind that I need to segregate it and give it out to the parties what they need. And of course, above all, more than anything else, they are respectable human beings. I have to respect them. I have no one to judge them. I will come forth and will take care of this aspect that yes, I have to mediate and I, I have gratitude for that aspect, that I am in a position to put two parties before me to help them facilitate with their problems and to come to an amicable settlement. Now, are we aware about the new concept which is being developed upon? It's called the MEDAR. It's a mediation and arbitration. I just want to talk about it because this is what is evolving. This is what is changing the society, which was introduced by India. And now it is gone abroad and internationally, how they are dealing with it and it's coming back. So the concept of this is it is it's an innovative combination of mediation and arbitration. And it involves a mutual individual facilitates the settlement between the parties. And if there is no voluntary resolution, suppose the mediation fails, the same thing goes forward for arbitration. The dispute, only a part of the dispute is settled, then his role terminates and arbitration clause comes into operation. The parties are given a choice depending upon the terms to appoint a, a, a new arbitrator and he who will in the process perform a final binding award. There is even a possibility when some dispute remains unresolved and then upon conclusion of mediation, in this process, a mutual party wears a different hat. That is, a mediator wears a different hat. He comes to becomes an arbitrator and gives a final award to the parties. Now, mediation has a elasticity. This meta has an elasticity of switching from mediation to arbitration. The access best features both ADR mechanism is why this form is called mediation with a muscle. As it allows parties to be flexible, but still have an element of arbitration for resolving disputes that remain unresolved. According to 2020 Singapore International Dispute Resolution Academy survey, arbitration with a hybrid to ADR mechanism for international commercial dispute is third most used dispute resolution mechanism. And the Queen's in the year 2021, Queen Mary University of London published international arbitration survey where 56% of sample pool preferred international arbitration in conjunction with an ADR tool when it comes to resolve 
cross border disputes. We know the current issue, what is happening, the cross border dispute of Russia and Ukraine. And I was very happy to read one of the publications of the news where it said they wanted India to be. I mean, we are coming to that stage that our country is coming forward for that. And of course, uh, MEDA allows for softer and physical mediation process by exhausting all possibilities to achieve a resolution to a dispute peacefully and voluntarily in it can be transformed into a tailor-made process that can satisfactorily resolve a wide range of disputes, especially civil, commercial, family disputes, and industrial. Now, the very fact of the matter, to conclude the demand of ADR, call for increasing innovative and practical solutions to well-skilled mediators. So what are you actually being trained for is to become a well-skilled mediator. It is now mandatory for schools to introduce the concept of mediation. And even our college, the way you have the best faculty here in children, teaching you that aspect is just training you further that you can from this process, which can be conducted with a single neutral and separate neutral. The most important aspect here, I would say that, is The fact that you can, you may now be law graduates. You are in your process of becoming law graduates. But with your experience of dealing with co complex transactions and practical knowledge, now we're talking about matrimony here, you already know about the legal system. Like we are getting trained. How do we deal with it? How do we go about it? The reason for con conflicts are many. When I got for my training, the first session was on conflicts. What are conflicts? When they're humans, they are there, what are we bound to be conflicts? So, what are those conflicts? They are misunderstanding, miscommunication. I'm not talking about the miss here, there's a miss. Miss it out. Okay. Ego issues, trust, greed. They all contribute to conflicts. Ultimately, small differences of opinion can lead to a big conflict. Even big conflict can be resolved with some moment of understanding and communication. And that is why mediation is important because we encourage communication. We cannot say, okay, you come and talk. Say, I'm so happy you're here. And you share your thoughts with them. So it's the way I project the concept of communication to them, win their trust, win their comfort zone, that they come and talk to me. If conflicts arises in your personal life, they can be resolved by avoiding people you don't want to meet. You can choose personally sacrifice some property or money to get mental peace. Yadde dokha. Shanti, there. But that is an attitude. That is not a philosophy. That's a personal attitude that you want to resolve. Forget about it. Conflict will be over and done. Sometimes you choose a path of silence. And even develop a philosophical attitude to such issues. Every day in our lives, we face conflicts, be it between family members, personal life, or even businesses, even with the fact, though it is not with this moment of matrimonial mediation that I'm having, we know about how difficult it was for all the people who were going through economic crisis in pandemic. And they were crises. Now, those crises developed content, dishonoring of checks, no returns of assured. There was issue with you know business transactions now those were causing conflicts they were causing a lot of issues among all of them and that was increasing litigation because litigation increases with conflicts one must have a foresight to look beyond a conflict now that is my training that is going to be your training that I know they have come here because there's a dispute now I have to look beyond that and find options and ways and you might have to differentiate and 
know about the disagreement, how to bring them on the table is my creativity of my mind without even doing anything. Because if I force them to do, it, do anything, I will be going beyond mediation. And I'm not permitted to do so. And if the parties come up amicably to a solution, it's a win-win situation for them. One should usually start by initiating dialogue to clarify. Most of the time, the misunderstanding comes because there is no clarification. There is no clarity. If we problem kya hai? What is it? Ki mung suja ho hai? Why you have a son? Ki bata na. To ye sab jab tak koi puchega nahi aur uske baad then we are already in that phase. We will not be able to deal with the issue. So obviously as a mediator I'm not going to say what is your problem? I'm going to say what brings you here? I'm sure there's a dispute. So obviously the concept in the mind is the same, but my presentation changes. I cannot be like that. I'm sure among friends today, I'm sure there is a one who's a counseling person, there's a mediator among friends who is going and solving these problems for them. But is that that is what we are developing in a in a profound way, where we are learning law, we are learning how to present, we are learning are we going to be in the boundary of mediation, our training, what does it teach us? How do we go about solving it? And that is what the beautiful practice of mediation. And I'm so happy to be here. And I hope I've been able to make it an interesting session for all of you to be able to understand the meaning, how to go about going to the balcony and solving the issue by giving the parties their space and coming to our little solution. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, uh, so we'll take a
So um, I hope we'll be able to assist you with your situation today. Um, before we proceed, let's just go about uh, the table for a round of introductions. Um, you can tell us your name, your role here at the and uh, at the table, and if you have the authority to say. Anyone can go first. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Anita, and I am uh, the client here, and I have full authority to make decisions. Hi, Anita. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Yashos, and I'm the counsel for Anuta. You can refer to me as Yashos. Hi, everybody. I'm Suresh, and I'm the client here. And yes, I do have authority to take decisions. Hi, all. I'm Samyukta, and I'm the counsel for Suresh. And you can call me Samyukta. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I hope you guys found the um, center easily and if at all during the mediation you require any, any amenities or you just want to take a little time or off, feel free to let us know. Um, I think before we roll into the session, the first acknowledgement that we must do is that we have agreed to mediate this dispute and the second one would be that you chose Arjun and I to mediate this for you. So before we snowball into these agreements, 
Um, I just want to check in with you where, about two things. One is you have signed the me uh, agreement to mediate, which also has your confidentiality agreement. Um, so yes, on all ends. Great. And um, ahead of that, if you have taken a mediation process before this, if you're familiar with the process, I'll take that as a maybe. Okay, and we just go through the process quickly and um, Arjun here will run us through the essentials of the process and what we're going to be doing here today. Um, but one thing to remember is that this mediation is an open conversation between all of us. Um, and Arjun and I are here to assist you with this conversation. So pieces of information that require clarity, structure, um, or just introspection and focus on interests, Arjun and I will try our best to help you with that. Um, do you want to take up the process and everything else? Right. Good evening to each one of you. Uh, thank you, Anita and Suresh as well, uh, for coming here and showing your enthusiasm to cooperate and uh, advocate to resolve those differences. It means the world to every one of us over here, and I'm sure uh, it will do a uh, great, I mean, be a big, big uh, process ahead, and I'm sure we'll be uh, going on I had further on. So my name is Arjun Alexi Chonkar and uh, uh, you can refer to me as Arjun and I will be uh, co-mediating this dispute alongside my esteemed colleague Yashika and uh, without any further ado I would just like to uh, just briefly tell you about what the process of mediation is and what our roles as mediators will be. Uh, so uh, there are a few key concepts and features of mediation which set this process apart and make it special. Uh, so first of all uh, this process is voluntary, uh, so I believe each one it is on your uh, agreement that you are here to mediate, and uh, therefore uh, you are the sole deciders of what how you want to take this mediation forward. And whether you come to a resolution, what the resolution is, is totally dependent on you. And uh, secondly, this process is neutral, uh, so we as mediators have had no prior acquaintance with. I hear of you, and uh, we will all, we are we are also without any bias in this mediation. Uh, and thirdly, this this mediation is confidential. Uh, so under the section eighty nine of the uh, Civil Code of uh, Code of Civil Procedure, we are here to mediate today. And uh, whatever is said in this mediation will remain confidential. And uh, I truly urge each one of you to communicate and and air out your thoughts in this mediation. Uh, so, just to conclude over here, our role as mediators is just to act as, hum uh, as humble uh, facilitators who will enable to create a proactive and a safe space for each one of you to communicate clearly. So, Ashika, would you like to take up the process and how it goes about? Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, two things that uh, might help clear this out a little better is um, to look at our role would be to look like uh, at a Google Maps. Right, um, you're going to enter your destination, or you can like keep editing your destination as we go across which route to take, and we're just going to try to help you get there as smoothly and quickly as possible. Um, and ahead of that, as Arjun mentioned, confidentiality is key. Make sure you use this benefit of confidentiality to be as open, as transparent, and as possible with your ideas. Um, so, talking about the process today. Right now, Arjun and I are delivering our opening statements, following which we we'll go through um, opening statements from everyone else. Um, in your opening statements, try to tell us why you are here at this table or what brings you or what you're trying to seek out of this mediation. So it gives us a head start on what we're going to be doing today. Um, post which we'll try to um, set out an agenda, an agenda based on your priorities and the things that you'd like to talk about. Um, once we're set onto an agenda, we'll go into a joint discussion, which will have um, us talking about the agenda items that we've decided upon it on the order of our priority. If at all, at any point in time, um, either Arjun or, or I or anybody else um, sees the need for a private session, that is a private session with uh, the both of us or even alone, uh, feel free to call out for the same, right? Um, there's an extra layer of confidentiality that applies to the private sessions, which means anything that is said within the private session will remain so unless we have an agreement otherwise. Um, with that being said, we have so many minutes for our session today. 
Um, but feel free to reschedule for another session at any point in time. Um, and then we just keep the process rolling that way. Is at this point, I just want to check in. Is does that sound okay? Is there anything you wanna? Oh, Yashuk, I just want to check how you would want to be referred to. Uh, is everybody okay with being addressed with their first names? Perfect. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Sounds good. And with that check, I would also like to check if English is an okay language for everyone. Comfortable? Yeah. 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 All right. Wonderful. So um, with that, I believe we can kick start the process um, and jump right into opening statements. Now, generally, uh, the party that requests goes on with their opening statements, but we're comfortable with anybody taking up the floor as per your name. Uh, so, Rachel, that's all right. All right. Uh, please let me know how I can be audible. Do I need to throw your voice like a little bit turn them? Yeah. That's it. Is this all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep shifting the mic around as for. Well. Oh, I'm just okay. So a very good evening, everybody. Thank you so much, Yashika and Arjun, for explaining the process of mediation so well to us. It definitely means. Um, to quickly reintroduce myself, my name is Anita and Suresh. I am glad we got this opportunity to hopefully uh, settle some important and contentious aspects of our lives out of the books and the books in general. Now, before getting right down to business, I do want to address how we got here. While it is true that the pandemic and the lockdown was not kind to our relationship, I truly believe that wasn't the start. COVID simply accelerated the process. You know we were miserable right from the beginning, or much before that at least. We just were never forced to address our incompatibility. You know, our situation reminds me of one uh, of Poet Kabir's story. Rahiman daga prem ka mat toro jhatkai, tute se fir na jure, jure par gaad par jai. Which roughly translates to the delicate, of, the, the delicate thread of love between two people. When it snaps, even if you mend it, there's always going to be a love. And today, I don't need to tell you how our relationship has grown many such lives. But more importantly, I don't know how to explain to you the fear that would take over me every time I heard your voice raise unexpectedly. I am tired of anticipating your every next move and living in an environment that is not defined by love or comfort, but by sheer anxiety. It's not an environment that I want our son to she could grow up in, continue growing up. Speaking of, there are a lot of factors we need to talk about and settle here today, but the most important to me is the well-being and welfare of our son. He's the innocent victim of a war that you and I see. I just want to ensure that his life and standard of living remain stable, even after the students. After that, I would also like to discuss the subject of permanent anonymity for myself and other miscellaneous costs such as mediation costs and mediation costs that will be encountered. I hope today you will showcase an attitude of collaboration if not for the sake of our, us and our, what we've had, at least for the sake of us. That being said, I would like my counsel to take over and elaborate on my interests a little bit. Yashas, over to you. Thank you, Anita. Uh, firstly, thank you, Yashika and Arjun, for explaining the process of mediation. Uh, I have been to several such sessions, but I found your explanation quite useful and quite intuitive as well. Thank you, Suresh, and thank you, Samyukta, for sitting on with us today. My name is Yashas, and I'm the counsel representing Anita today at this session. Uh, we're really glad that we could sit down at this session because we believe the first clarification I'd like to put on the table, something I think is worth noting, is that the divorce has been finalized to the extent that both parties want the divorce. This mediation is exclusively to determine the terms of the settlement that we want post the finalization of the divorce. So what is not in contention here is whether or not we want the divorce, but what that divorce looks like for either parties and how we can collaboratively come to what that settlement looks like. 
Uh, today, we would prefer not to turn to litigation because, as you explained, mediation offers that opportunity, offers that space to actively engage and speak to each other to figure out what best Anita and you, Suresh, want. Which is why I advise Anita focusing on questions of fault and liability is not going to give us enough progress in the session. What we should enough, what we should focus on is common interests such as Suresh's future and what that holds to the both of you. And but more importantly. What Anita has gone through, at least from my perspective, and our conversations have been very insightful in terms of what she has gone through as a mother. And I'm sorry, Suresh and Sumit, that you also have a lot to offer to us at this table. My role here is simply an advisory one to the extent that I'm not going to actively uh, try to steer this conversation to any end. I'm just going to help Anita and you, Suresh, figure out what is the best for the both of you. Uh, and Rafika and Arjun, I'm generally used to legal technicalities which means I might slip into legal jargon. I will ensure that I don't do it, but in case I do get lost in clauses, acts, sections, please pull me back to ensure that we have a very good conversation. Uh, Anita and I understand that, we understand at least our interest based on what Anita says is first Shishir and his maintenance and what that looks like on both our sides. And second is what is the permanent alimony and what that looks like. So our agenda, once we do create it, the focal point will be one of Shishir and what maintenance will look like, and second, permanent alimony. So, if the agenda could be structured in that way, we think we foresee a mutually uh, beneficial agenda. Was your opening statement? Thank you. All right. So, just to summarize what uh, Anita and Royal uh, Justice has said over here, I would just like to state that uh, Anita has talked about that this dispute started pre pandemic. And uh, the, the situation of fear and an unsafe environment which she has been in, and uh, she uh, she has stated her interest as priority prioritizing uh, her son Shishir, and uh, it's the most important thing for her is the well-being of the son, uh, and uh, and uh, she also wants to talk about alimony and litigation costs and the mediation costs. So with that in mind, the agenda proposed by both. Uh, Anita and the Roy Yashas is uh, something like what the divorce settlement looks like in that uh, this Shishir's uh, maintenance and then the custody of Shishir and then secondly, alimony and litigation costs. Does that sound good? All right. Hi, Anita. Uh, it's April 2022 uh, and this month marks 17 years of our marriage. And I I think you said that we were miserable from the beginning and even before that. Well, I tend to disagree because I think we had something beautiful. And we met in university. And when I got married to you, I actually thought that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. I know we've grown apart, but one of the beautiful creations of our marriage was our baby boy, Shishir. And I just, I just want to be very honest with you. While I knew that this divorce was long coming, it was inevitable. I was still a little shaken up when I got the legal notice at my doorstep. And I was even more shocked when I realized that you wanted full custody of Shishir. And I just want you to know that I have loved Shishir as much as you. And I know you are his mother and a mother's love is incomparable, but that does not mean that as his father, I have not shown up. I know I might have not been there for our marriage when I needed to be, but I have done everything I could to be there for Shishir. So as blunt as it may sound, I'm sorry, Anita, but I will not give up my baby boy. Complete custody of Shishir with you is something that I am completely opposed to and I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that my baby boy is not gone from my hand. I think both of you spoke about how you don't want to take this to litigation and I think that for Shishir's best interests, that is something that even I concur with. I don't want our boy to see both of us fighting in court for a long drawn out court case over who gets custody of him. So I asked the mediators to help us facilitate this conversation today so that more than our divorce, it's Shishir's welfare that is being kept in mind. And I know you went through a lot of anxiety 
about my voice being raised unexpectedly, us having a lot of fights. And you're right, this started a lot before the pandemic and the lockdown, which was supposed to keep us together in a home, actually just drew us more apart. And before we begin the session, I just want to say that I know I had my reasons, but I'm still sorry for everything I put you through. With that, uh, I think I'll just defer to Samyuksa. I'm sure you met her when she came over for dinner a couple of years ago. And it's unfortunate you're meeting again in this circumstance, but she's been a friend to me throughout this time. And I think she's the right person I could turn to. Thank you, Suresh. In fact, it's very difficult to continue after such um, emotional opening statements by both of you. But nevertheless, again, uh, hi, everyone. Firstly, uh, thank you, um, Arjun and Yashika, for agreeing to sit with us today and to help us settle this dispute. Um, thank you, Anita and Yashis, for, uh, you know, coming here and hopefully we can find favorable uh, agreements by the end of this evening. Um, and Anita, I understand that this period is, will be extremely difficult for you, but I sincerely hope that you're doing well and hopefully you get better soon and I hope you're doing well to your office. So uh, now with respect to the uh, underlying uh, dispute uh, i don't have to exactly probably talk about the legal aspect because yoshis did cover that but i would just like to go back and um uh, actually recall the first discussion i had with suresh um initially when we we're speaking i did tell him that we can uh fight this in the courts uh, and it's not a big deal we'll be able to do it but he was actually very skeptical about how it was going to turn out like how he said uh he was uh, he felt that this is an extremely emotional case for him and it is something that he will not be able to continue so easily. So he's, uh, to be really honest, uh, from this side at least, I think I can uh, inform on behalf of Suresh that we're very happy that the court uh, mandated the mediation. We're happy to be here today uh, to discuss and settle this. Um, this is the preferable choice for Su Suresh and I couldn't agree more because I guess we all know how cumbersome court cases are and I'm sure uh, Yash is a has also seen several custody battles that are really ugly and very difficult. Uh, so we hope, we sincerely hope we can finish this today. Uh, but however, uh, I, uh, I've also advised uh, Suresh that in case, unfortunately, his primary interests are not being met at the table, uh, we can go to the uh, court, especially with you know uh, certain provisions that are favorable for us. Uh, but however, as uh, Yasha said, that uh, even though we have to keep certain legal requirements in mind, um, in case the legal language does get the better of us, we, I hope uh, Yashika and Arjun can put us back on track. Um, and again, I would like to clarify that I'm merely here in an advisory capacity and it is Suresh will be doing all the work here today. So with that being said, um, the primary interests that we bring to the table today and to make it uh, more easier for the mediators as well are uh, in the preferable order of our agenda. We first to discuss the custody of Shishu, uh, followed by which the alimony and uh, uh, along with the child support that is together can come under the maintenance umbrella, followed by which future litigations and costs of the mediation. Yeah, so that is from my side, and I hope we have a fruitful discussion. Okay. <clears throat> um, that was a lot of emotionally fueled uh, statements at the table. And um, what I heard you both say is that the number one priority is Shishir and Shishir's custody. Um, and then we also want to talk about the alimony and the other um, expenses that come with it. Um, I heard um, Anita club them together in the second agenda, and I heard you um, split them. So um, just to run over that aspect, um, do you mind clubbing them or splitting them? Do you want to? Um, how I think what would be beneficial was would be to deal with how Shishi is going to, you know, how we're going to deal with Shishi and his well-being. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think custody and his main games should be discussed together. And that's the first thing I want to discuss. Mm -hmm. And after that, so we can have the maintenance and the custody as sub-agendas. Okay, does that sound okay with you? Yeah, I think 
That sounds good. Okay, so I think what we can pen down is that the first item of agenda would be then to talk about the custody yeah. and the alimony club together, um, which would take us to the second part, which is talking about the expenses of litigation or um, any other uh, uh, expenses that were brought into the picture. Is that okay? I believe it's custody plus child support and yeah. then alimony followed exactly. by litigation. Okay, okay. Should Does I just that, write down that? Down? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. As Arjun goes on to uh, write about this, what we can do is, if you both are comfortable uh, right now, uh, we can dive right into the conversation about Trishi's welfare um, and what it is that we've planned for him. Okay, so if I may, Suresh, I just don't see how Shishi will be able to have a healthy mental state while living with the both of us together. I think because of your past actions and the anxious environment that Shishi has been facing up to now, it will be beneficial for him if I receive full custody. I am in no way doubting your love towards our son. At the end of the day, I know that you also hope for his best interest to be there. And for that reason, I strongly urge you to let me have soul custody. Anita, can you help me understand a little better what exactly is this past action that you're referring to? So, I don't want to get into the psychology and the trauma a child faces, especially when he's a 14-year-old boy. He has so many things to be concerned about. On top of that, if he's there in a very tension-filled environment under your custody, it's just going to make matters worse for you. Anita, I think you're missing the point here. The tension-filled environment was because you and I were living together. If you and I are not living together, then that tension-filled environment is not there. It's just me and my love for my child. That is an assumption and that is a risk that I am not willing. At the end of the day, it was your erratic behaviors, your anger fueled voices and your rude behavior that has brought us to this table today. How can you expect that all of this will disappear just because we're not living together? Because we're just going to take a moment here because we're climbing up a slope that is a little tricky to climb together, um, which is um, going into a heated discussion about what has happened. Um, what we can do here is that um, what I heard you say is that the environment is the reason why you would like to have sole custody. Um, and then I heard you say that um, if the environment no longer exists, the issue of sole custody doesn't exist, right? How do you want to tread about that? Is there an idea that you have about the custody thing that we can carry out? Uh, Yashika, if I can just quickly clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Aita's larger point was that there is a pattern of behavior of desolation like this, which one makes her feel insecure because one, it, it's just simply very erratic. It's highly excited. It uh, makes her anxious all the time. So even irrespective of how, whether or not she's the causation of that, this behavior has had a pattern, which makes us wonder if there is something that you would want to probably discuss. Just in terms of uh, like whether something is triggering you or what is triggering you, because if it's Anita as a whole that's triggering you, this conversation would be a lot simpler. But given that there has been a pattern where Anita has not been involved as well, we think there might be something more than just Anita. Do. Suresh, um... Would it be right for me to um, understand from this that um, you're trying to understand Suresh's viewpoint as to what's been difficult for him recently and the cause of the environment? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yajika, first of all, I don't like the accusation being put completely on me that I have been the only reason this anxious environment has been there in the house. Mm -hmm. And I would like it if Anita realized that it's not just me, but our incompatibility together, which was the reason that this environment was there. And that is why Sishil would have not um, had the best possible development in his early years because of this environment, which was created by you and me together. 
I don't think we can pinpoint it to any one specific thing. And Anita, at least I've not gone to the extent of just wiping out your entire existence from his life by asking for full custody. I am merely asking for joint custody where he can be with both you and me. Suresh, uh, would you like me to just propose what we're planning to so we can get on to like what we are probably discussing more in detail. Uh, so the factor is uh, Suresh basically just wants uh, joint custody, that is to have uh, physical custody of uh, Shashir uh, during the weekends and uh, he can stay with Anita during the week. So that was something that we're planning and to probably have legal equal legal uh, custody of Shashir. So that is what we're planning to ask so that you can get an idea. So uh, what do you? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I was just trying to summarize that for you, but if no, that's no. clear, we can go ahead. Yeah. yeah so you have to remember that he has a note on his feet right now. He can't be jumping from one house to the other every single week. It's just, we're asking too much from a 14-year-old boy. He needs a stable environment. He needs consistency in his life. He might want to visit his friends over the weekend. How do you expect me? And who's going to keep driving him back and forth? There are too many things to, you know, take into consideration. But the most important one being that I am not I don't want to take any risks at all with my baby boy. He has to live under his mother's care. He will be the most safest there. And I don't know if I am a factor when it comes to your behavior or not, but I don't want to find him. Not through him at least. I would rather be safe. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like a I'd like call. Okay. All right. Um... We can step right into a caucus now, worry not. Um, we'll step right into another caucus with you right after. So what you can do in this while is probably take a break, take a few sips of coffee, water or whatever else. Um, and maybe also think about what we can do together um, in our time for the caucus and otherwise in the joint session as well, right? Should I lead you guys out or no? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so stepping right into a private caucus, I just want to again reiterate that everything that we talk about, um, um, if there's anything that you'd explicitly like to keep private, let me know. Um, in advance of all these. Thank you. Yashika and Arjun, there's nothing that I'd like to be kept as explicitly private. It's just that I'm not going to take her coming into this session and blaming everything on me and saying that our boys, who is both our child, his benefit, his welfare is only under her care. You can, I hope you can understand how it feels to me as a father to be told that you're not capable of taking care of my, of your child. Oh, absolutely. So, I am not willing to give her full custody. And what if she's wrong? What if she was the reason these fights were happening? What if she was the reason there was this anxiety that was there? So what I'm supposed to just take that chance with her? Um, moreover, the inner mediation, right? Like this is actually moving as a quote right now because you're blaming the other party because we didn't want to come with an intention because even I'm sure that based on the conversations I've had with Suresh, he can also actually say uh, accusations and accusatory remarks. But we, yeah, we are here with the maximum interest to ensure that doesn't happen. And when it comes to the welfare, like, so we just, that's an argument of a quote. So in that way, the court will also see how the father is to just give a legal in, uh, aspect, but we are here to not up or do cause any accusatory comments. So that's yeah. our intuition. So that's why I can see that Suresh is not giving back because of our bias. Yeah, we put forth the message that let's use IP statements and the And more than that, I'd like them to also understand that I love my son and I'm not ready to let him go. And I'm not ready to take that risk with her either. So I think it's best if we just took joint custody and the logistics about who's going to drive someone that those are just small things we live in the same city at the end of the day okay so what i'm hearing you say is that shishir is important to you very and you would like to sort this out without 
the past being brought into picture. However, sometimes what happens is when we are dealing with relationships, they are based on a certain context of how they've come up, right? Um, so if there are anxieties that exist, um, do you have an idea as to how you want to deal about it? How do you want Probably, to deal with it? Probably, uh, Suresh, just a suggestion, you can ask her how she might feel comfortable like having or uh, like probably meeting the song when you can meet him for some while and then ask for custody. I mean, just a suggestion, the balls in your court, but like probably you can ask um, how she would feel comfortable with it. So, so if I'm it. hearing you correctly, Samyukta, um, a little phasing into the relationship um, and finding out what would be comfortable areas um, for Anita to start interacting and talking about custody uh, would be one way to go about it where um, we could see more possible solutions that are negotiated, but like collaborated. Also, also Yashika, there is one other thing. I am yeah. going to Dubai very soon for a six month project. Mm -hmm. So maybe after I come back from that, we can all have a fresh start with uh, maybe a, some time away from home, some time away from my city, mm -hmm. working on something new might just change perspectives. And maybe when I come back, then uh, the same situation would not be there because Anita and I can in fact even have uh, video calls during that time which will be supervised by her in the background I guess I mean again it sounds like to me I'm not going to be seeing you for a while so <laughs> when are you going to death Dubai uh, it's soon uh, the dates are not finalized but once I'm going uh, once I'm gone I'll be gone for six months okay all right we can talk about that is there anything else that you want to share with me no, Arjun Arjun is there anything else you want to the only takeaway from this conversation would be I'm not ready to give up this shit, no matter what. And as we discussed, talking about phasing into that conversation and seeing what are the comfortable places for Anita to start like entering this conversation about custody is something we are open to, yeah? Okay. Um, I would strongly urge you to propose this yourself, but if you feel uncomfortable, Arjun, and I can help you. I think you should. Do it for you. I see, I, it seems there's some hostility between the two of us. So That's okay. We can work on that. Um, with that, I think it's time for your coffee break. Um, yeah. So you can go grab yourself refreshments and we'll be with Anita for a bit. Back. Hope your coffee break was fruitful. Um, so, best to again just reiterate uh, this private one focus is completely confidential. Please feel free to lay out your thoughts and then uh, we'll also be supporting some suggestions which have been made by my solution. Yes, sir. I can reveal yep. my concerns yep. now. Again, I just want to confirm that it's not going to get relayed to him unless I'm wanted to be done. Right? Absolutely. All right. So, I can understand how I might have seemed a little bit rigid and maybe even cool in my approach when it came to Suresh and Shashir. But as a mother, your concerns tend to hide and you tend to get more protected of your child. Especially when you have lived with a man like that and been in that environment and seen how it has affected not only you, but your son as well. I don't have any proof concrete proof that Suresh does have mental health issues such as borderline personality disorders, it is a huge concern. Yes, if you could just expand. Just like to clarify at this point, the reason Anita says that she's not sure of it is because there is no medical certificate that's legally verified, which is a cause for concern for us because there's been a pattern of such behavioral issues over the past which means even if Anita was not the triggering point, there have been multiple instances where Suresh has exhibited such aggressive, eccentric, and selfish behavior, and aggressive behavior, all of which we think are not conducive within the environment the child is supposed to grow up. So I think our larger concern is, Anita definitely sympathizes with the fact that there needs to be some sort of change and some sort of like uh, reform or like some sort of help that Suresh might need. But the reason we want to keep this confidential is because we want to be very careful in the way we use terminology, especially around Shishir because he is a young, impressionable boy. So that's why we are just very concerned as to what his mental state looks like and what he is feeling at this point. 
which with the point being like the custody isn't as big to, as much as a problem only it becomes a problem given the current state of Suresh. So we are willing to discuss the future possibility of sharing joint custody. But at this point, given that there has been no sufficient uh, guarantee. guarantee or like no behavioral change that has been exhibited by Suresh, Anita is a lot skeptical about it. Hmm. So Anita and um, Yashas, what I'm hearing you say is that custody is not that big of a concern um, unless and until this entire picture of um, Suresh's mental health and his current context comes into picture, right? Uh, the concern that you have with custody is whether Suresh is fit. Um, and in that, um, I see that you might be willing to share custody if we open this conversation up about um, being a fit parent to Suresh, um, sorry, to Shishir. Um, but I would want to ask him here, how is it that you would like to pitch this conversation? Or is there an idea that you have for um, how you would like to talk to Suresh about this? Because um, what I'm hearing from him is that Shashir is really important. Um, and I'm sure there are areas that he would like to be working on if, if we are going to talk about it. Yes, I can tell you how to talk to him. I wouldn't be here today. And Fair. besides that, once you talk about a solution or idea, while I don't have any concrete in my mind, and I hope you will um, facilitate a conversation that leads Suresh and I to each one, I think the first step can be visitation rights and visitation timings, and then maybe move on to shared custody. I am not willing to take that leap. I'm not even willing to grant visitation rights as of now. Mm -hmm. But upon further insistence, and maybe if I see any improvement, in him satisfies me, I might even consider visitation. Just a point that may go here. So your core concern is leaving Shishir in the sole custody of Suresh, right? Um, Without any supervision. That is that is the, some of the core concern of during the period of visitation. Like uh, in general, you don't want to leave Shishir in the sole custody of Suresh. Oh. Just a week. Alone time. with. Okay. Yeah. yeah, alone. Yeah. Um, Anita, would you say that that is actually uh, this thing, or you are comfortable with um Suresh's parenting um in in his alone time? Now, there's like a little caveat I think that we've stepped right into uh, about Shashir and Suresh's alone time. Is there anything that you want to add about it, or is that okay with you? So I think our primary concern still remains that mm -hmm. we do not have a confirmation of what. Uh, he's going through specifically whether or not he's going through certain mental health issues, okay. whether or not that needs some resolution or some sort of uh, help. Mm -hmm. So I think a conversation starter could be how we go about uh, resolving that because that still remains the primary focus point of custody. I understand. So yeah. Okay. Um, well, and good. Just one more thing is that um, I did hear Suresh want to work on himself and something that may help is toning our conversation down to what we can do rather than what has happened. Yeah. Um, so if we could try to help each other figure this out a little bit more, I think that might take a different turn. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, is there anything else you want to add before I call the call? Uh, just one thing that we wouldn't want you to disclose uh, Anita's terminology of borderline personality mm -hmm. disorder. Because we we want to keep that amongst ourselves because that's Anita's impression. What is it? So unless we get verifiable terminology, we don't want to use that. Um, wonderful. So I'll just call him, call them right in. Uh, and Um, okay, so we have a positive of time at our session. We have the next five minutes to talk about what we can do for our next sessions, right? Um, so just to quickly catch you both up, um, we, Arjun and I heard that you do want to work on custody. Both of you want to work on custody. Um, and both of you feel comfortable talking about custody in a larger way. Um, Suresh um, has also mentioned that this phasing in of visitations and of um, testing the waters with, um, you know, getting through to Shashir and getting um, through to you is something that he's willing to do on his end. 
Um, and we heard from Anita that this phasing in thing and visitations is something that she's also comfortable with. Um, now, how you want to go about it and what you'd like to talk about your feelings in terms of what's happening in these visitations and all, I think I'll open the floor up for you to have that conversation. Um, another thing is our friend here is going to Dubai for six months. Um, so perhaps when we talk about the visitation and phasing in, we're also looking at um, video calls and a long distance phasing in to understand each other better. That might help with the environment and the whole idea of uh, uh, an immediate environment, right? Um, so these are some of the things I want you to keep in mind while making your closing statements and talking about uh, what we want to do in the future sessions with regards to these details. I see there's something you want to add, so go ahead. Yashika, my concern is just not limited to any sort of physical trauma that my son might see. He is an impressionable young boy. I would want there to be supervision if we are going to seriously consider even long distance video calls. Um, somebody to supervise what kind of conversations are being had. Um, with the divorce, I don't want there to be any sort of conversation about me and anything about that matter. There are a lot of concerns that you know, just have sort of started lighting up in my brain, but it's not a simple line. Until when will we have this supervision? Oh, and I, I'd, I'd like to add something. Uh, Anita, I think you're just looking at one side of the coin. What about the times where you are alone with, uh, with Shishi and when there is nobody to supervise, how am I to trust that you are not filling his ears with things about me which just make him more antagonized towards me. What I'm hearing is that measures that go one way, measures that go both ways, right? So if we step into these waters, um, they require a certain backing on both ends. While I appreciate that, Yashika, I am not the one who has been showing the pattern of erratic behaviors. On that note. Yeah, towards that end, we completely hear you. And I think it's important to note that, as you correctly mentioned, there has to be certain giving and taking, which is why we do propose a mental health assessment by a professional, uh, mental health professional, just in terms of seeing where both of you stand and what this looks like for you. Because I think our concerns right now, all of us are not professionals who can gauge what's been happening. And both you have had a fracture and a very tumultuous time. So post that assessment, we think there's greater objective clarity and there's just greater contextual clarity by a professional as to how both of them should proceed. So I think that's the first step you'd like to initiate, which is to have both of them go for a mental health assessment just to see where they stand and how they feel about the end of the situation. Okay. And Anita, if I'm understanding correctly, if this assessment says that the problem was because both of us were together and it won't versus when both of us are apart. I hope there wouldn't be any issues with me getting custody, joint custody of Shishi. Uh, Anisha, just, just like to answer that, please. Uh, I think a lot of it is dependent on the report. So a lot of it might change in the individual assessment of mental health reductions. So based on that report, some of the, we can have Shishi schedule another session. Just yeah, to I, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. But I would like an in-principle agreement that if the reports are fine from my end, if the assessment clears me, I should not have a problem getting custody. Okay, so just to catch up on this conversation is that um, what Suresh here is trying to mention is that there should be some form of uh, backing. Um, there should be some form of backing um, that's going to, oh, we are just going to cut it out now. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's recording it. Yes. What did you say? <laughs> But our IT team needs to take over. Too many people are showing me the tea. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you seem to be ignoring everyone. <laughs> we really got time to carry. Yeah, good no, job. No, no. I genuinely hated you for a bit. <laughs> I was genuinely for a 